Uh, welcome, everybody. I'm going to talk to you. This is the first lightning talk of the session. Hope you guys all enjoyed the keynote. But I'm going to talk to you about uh, the Neo4j certification, how you go about that, what to expect. Um, and I'm going to attempt to do this in 15 minutes, because that's our lightning talk timeline. So this might be a little bit crazy, um, might be very fast, very high overview, um, but I'll try to do what I can. So first thing to know about me, I am a movie and music nerd, um, especially when it comes to movie music. Um, so the theme for this session I put together was Pirates of the Caribbean. So hopefully you guys will get a kick out of some of the, the memes and the, the uh, quotes and stuff from that. So a um, little bit more about who I actually am. Um, I'm a developer relations engineer for Neo4j. I got certified earlier this year. Um, and I enjoy conference speaking and blogging and uh, learning on a constant basis. So this was the quote that actually got me started for the theme for today. Um, so we're going to talk first about the exam rules, which are actually kind of more like guidelines, because they're really not overly strict. Um, the exam is free. There's no cost to it at all. You can take it as many times as you like um, or need. There's 80 questions. You do have a time limit of one hour, but the score is pass-fail, and you just have to get 80% to pass. So uh, working all those calculations out, that gives you about, um, for each question, about 1.25 points each, depending on the format. And there's two different kinds of formats. You either choose the best answer, or you check all that apply. Um, so obviously, if you check all that apply, that further divides the question in that 1.25 points down further based on each box you check. So here are the topics that the exam covers. Um, first, kind of high-level overview of Neo4j and kind of the background and the, the story of that. Um, then the Neo4j property graph data model, um, which we'll go into a little bit more detail in a second. The Cypher query language that we use to um, insert and retrieve the data. Um, then a little bit about the drivers and applications and configuration and logging. So the thing that everybody's been waiting for, what do I study? <laughs> um, so I can't give you the answer key. I can't give you the answers but I can give you what to expect and what to look for and what to study. Um, and so that's the drawing of the key. Can't give you the actual key, sorry. Um, so first, a little bit about design and architecture. I'm gonna start with some terms, kind of give you a good overview, get to a good understanding of what to expect and, and what you need to know at a high level. Uh, so the first thing is Neo4j is a database. At its, at its core, um, it's gonna provide basic database capabilities. So the first thing, um, and I've highlighted in red the things that are kind of stick out and are super important to know for the certification. Um, so ACID transactions, that's atomic, consistent, isolated, and durable. Um, that basically just means you're not gonna have a partial transaction commit to your database. Either the full transaction will commit or the full transaction will roll back if it's not successful. Um, so that's something that relational databases often provide, but not all NoSQL and graph databases provide this. We feel it's very important. Um, the next thing, uh, we are also very fast, um, but we also provide uh, clustering scale and high availability capabilities um, for enterprise needs. So things like backups, uh, failovers, some security measures, and then clusters. Uh, we do provide those capabilities too. Uh, binary and HTTP protocol, so you can use either one of those to connect to Neo4j. However, we typically default to uh, our binary protocol, which is called Bolt. Um, it is very, very performant, but it also provides some extra capabilities that HTTP does not. So that's why we default and use that oftentimes. Um, and then connecting with one of those protocols, you can use the official drivers to use um, to connect with any language application you want. So you could write uh, an application in Python, or you could write it in JavaScript, you could write it in Go, or pretty much any language under the sun, we have drivers out there that you can connect. So that's just basic database capabilities. What about graph database specific stuff? Um, so first off, Neo4j is a native graph database. What, um, we often like to tease our term is uh, graph all the way down. So there are some graph databases that at the underlying level have a table underneath and indexing underneath um, to do lookups and, and find relationships and things like that. We don't do that. Um, basically, our database chases memory pointers to track down graph traversals. Um, and so that's kind of our, that graph all the way through and through. So that's our graph storage layer. Uh, we use the property graph data model in order to structure and, and store and view our data. Um, and then Neo4j is schema free. So what that allows you to do is be very flexible with your data model and it, you can change that as your business ch changes or your market changes around you. Um, you put data in and take data out of Neo4j using the Cypher query language, which we'll talk a little bit more about as well. And then you can uh, do some other neat things with Neo4j as well, but not as pertinent to the certification. 
So first up, the property graph data model. Um, for some of you, it might be kind of new um, and totally different from anything you've seen before. So let's talk about that. Um, nodes, relationships, properties, and labels, those are the four main components of a graph property data model. Um, nodes can have properties and labels. Relationships have properties and relationship types. Um, and relationships connect those nodes together. So they show basically like a connect the dots. Um, they show how the uh, different nodes re relate to one another. And you can connect them with a unary relationship or a binary relationship. And then uh, you might want to know some property data types. There's several different types of standard data types out there. Um, and Neo4j allows uh, properties um, with any of those data types. And you can have varying amounts of properties on each node. CallDB.schema gives you a good overview, high level of what the data model looks like in your data underneath. Um, and just as a hint, there are a lot of questions on the thing that makes Neo4j and graph databases really, really unique, and that's relationships. So know what relationships do, know how to annotate them, know how to uh, write them, use them in Cypher, et cetera. That's really, really important on the certification. Um, property graph model components, so a little bit more details. So nodes represent the objects in the graph, and you can label them. So here on the right-hand side in our, our diagram, we have uh, three nodes here. Two of them are labeled person. One is labeled car. Um, then the relationships, you connect those nodes together, and you can relate nodes by type as well as direction. So notice there are arrows on these, and then you have different ways that you can connect those nodes together depending on how they relate to one another. Um, and then properties are the name value pairs that go on nodes and relationships as well. Um, so you'll see we've added on the drives, we've added a property on that relationship, and then properties on our nodes here, here, and here. So the thing to note here is that our Dan node, that we've given a name of Dan here, has a Twitter handle. Um, but the node that we've given a name of Anne does not. Um, that's because unlike relational databases where you would have a column and you would either leave that null or empty um, for Anne because you don't have that information for her, you don't have to do that in Neo4j. You just don't even store, it doesn't take up any memory space, it, you don't have to store that on your, on your data. So you only store what you have. Okay, not another query language. <laughs> don't worry, uh, this one is uh, really visual. It's pretty easy to pick up. I picked it up very, very easily. Um, I came from a SQL background. So um, basically it's SQL for graphs. So it's very declarative, it's very concise. Um, it's designed specifically for graph traversals and patterns um, and to work with graph data. So it's very, very good at that. Um, you can call dbms.procedures, and that'll show you all the procedures that are possible within Cypher. Um, you'll need to know a little bit about data import, nothing too in the weeds on this, but just know what options exist out there. So we have load CSV, there are a few things on that you might need to know, and then we have some other options too. So we have an ETL tool, and we have some other integrations too. Um, so just be aware of that. Hence, um, there are a lot of Cypher statements on there, or a lot of... Um, how would you write the cipher for this type of questions on the certification? So um, just kind of expect that and know your cipher really well and kind of what different things do. And then there's a lot of questions on syntax and functionality as well. So let's go back to uh, and write just a quick cipher statement just to get an overview. We'll go back to our Dan loves Anne example here. So uh, this is how that looks. So we're going to add our label here and our property name of Dan. Same thing over here. Uh, this node is a person, we're labeling it with person, grouping it, and then saying name is Anne over here. Now notice, um, there's our label and property specifications there, and then the nodes. So notice that the nodes are kind of encapsulated in uh, parentheses, which have this really nice circular kind of look to them, which look exactly like the way we draw nodes. Um, so Cypher, again, very visual, uses ASCII art. Um, so it appears basically like the visualization. And then same thing with our relationship here in the middle. We've given it a type of loves, and notice it has this lovely little arrow that kind of connects the two nodes together. Um, and then our create here at the very beginning is just a cipher keyword that's basically like insert. So it just creates that, th those nodes in the relationship in the database for us. So cipher keywords, um, things you need to be aware of. Um, know what merge does. If, if you're coming from a SQL background, you, this one may be kind of foreign. Um, so just know what that does. Uh, match and create are basically select and insert in SQL. Um, and then other keywords as well, profile, explain, as well as our clauses. So where, order by, and there's some other ones out there as well. 
So just be familiar with uh, that type of stuff. Uh, syntax for the nodes and relationships, so the patterns, um, node, relationship, node. And then you can traverse the relationship in either direction, but when you store it in the database, when you create it, you have to, uh, it has to store a particular direction. It's just the query, when you read it, allows you the flexibility to go either way. Um, detach, delete versus delete. You need to know why you use one rather than the other and what they do. Um, indexes, constraints, and nulls, functions, aggregations, and procedures. There are a few questions on there about um, this last point. So just kind of be aware of some of the main ones that are commonly used. Let's talk a little bit about Neo4j drivers and applications now. Um, there's not gonna be anything that is language specific here because obviously they're not gonna ask a JavaScript developer to write you know, something in Python or know something in Python um, and uh, all the way around it for various languages. So most of it's pretty generic. Um, however, you do need to know that we have some official drivers as well as just some community drivers and you need to know which ones kind of fall into which category um, as well as our Bolt protocol and the uh, port number for that. Um, statement results, a little bit about encryption. There aren't really too many questions here, but just to be aware of this is something that pops up. Um, let's talk operations now. Don't worry, this is not a ghost story. For those of you who are developers, operations may seem entirely scary and foreign and unknown. Um, it did to me, but don't forget to study about this because there are several questions in this area. Um, so let's talk this, this section then. Uh, configuration, deployment, and logging. You'll need to know um, some config properties, just basic, traditional, high-level ones, nothing too in the weeds. The location of your config files, where they, they sit in the database, um, deployment options. Originally, Neo4j was started as embedded, um, and then we opened it up and started doing these, these other types of deployment options. So just be aware of what all is out there um, and all that good stuff. So uh, log file names and locations, and then there are a few tricky questions here, but again, the bulk of your questions are not in this area. Um, clustering enterprise edition. So really the only thing different between community and enterprise is that enterprise, enterprise provides your clustering as well as some of your, your backups and your failovers and things like that that are enterprise needs. Um, so there are some questions on clustering. So you need to know kind of what backups are, how they work, how to restore them. Um, cluster instance roles, what each kind of does, uh, raft messaging and elections. There are a few questions here, but not too many. And then performance and security. So optimizations, what do you need to look at when you're trying to optimize your database? Um, and then page cache, why is it important to Neo4j? It is a very important thing to Neo4j, so you need to understand why that is and what to do with it. Um, security configuration properties and authentication, just one or two questions in that area. Um, and then native security roles. So again, very, very few questions in this segment, but it is there. So what are you going to get out of uh, the Neo4j certification. First off, you get a really cool free t-shirt. You'll get an email uh, after you get the email that says you passed to say, here, click here to claim your, your free t-shirt. You'll get one just like this that I'm wearing today. Um, you'll get an official certificate with your name on it. It's signed by our CEO, Emil. Um, and then you can add this to your resume or your CV um, and just add that achievement on there. But there's more. Um, you, you can get some community recognition. Please feel free to uh, share on social media and say, say you passed or um, post the community site or um, you will pop up on the community site saying that, hey, we've added these new people to our, our certification, wish them well and congratulate them. So we wanna celebrate with you, so allow us to do that. Also, you'll unlock some private access. So you'll get um, added to the uh, insiders group for certified developers on the community site. The thing is that we're doing at Graph Connect uh, for certified devs. So we have DevZone open. There's couches and plugins and all kinds of cool stuff there that uh, you can kind of just stay secluded and study and take the exam there. Um, so feel free to come by and do that. There's also some really cool other things in the DevZone you might want to check out. Um, and then we do have prizes for, your, for certified developers. So if you've passed the exam or if you pass while you're here at Graph Connect, uh, show us the certificate or the email and you'll get a prize for that as well. So what are you waiting for? Go take the test. <laughs> um, don't, don't be nervous about it. Again, unlimited number of attempts and the test is entirely free, so this really should be no pressure. Um, feel free to take a practice run, though. Don't tell anybody I said that. Um, all types of different resources for reading our operations manual and our developer manual, those are where the bulk of the questions are pulled from, but there's a lot of material in those as well. So 
just have a good overview and mix and match on that. Developer guides uh, hopefully is a little bit more kind of walkthrough tutorial-ish. Um, and then if you're an audio visual type of learner, you're, uh, there are some videos as well as online training classes you can uh, do for that. And then I have a blog post out there that kind of walks through some of this information as well. Hopefully everybody got that. <laughs> um, so if you have questions, uh, we're out of time for now, but feel free to catch me in the hall. I'll be back and forth between DevZone and sessions and, and all over today, as well as in training tomorrow and the hackathon on Saturday. So feel free to join us, and thank you very much, and enjoy GraphConnect.